Hey Ta, who's it? It's DJ Nipro here from the Nipicast. This morning I thought it would be better if maybe every single month we do some sort of a Nipicast introspection. This would mean that we look back at all of them and then we, I mean, we just go back and forth uh, focusing on, on the parts that were very mind-boggling and exciting. The parts that really serve the purpose of why we did the, the podcast with that particular guy or whoever it is. Because remember the reason why I started this podcast is simply because I go up and down the country, all over, meet different people, hang at bars, hang at parks, hang at pubs, hang at hotels, hang in the streets, hang at uh, chisanyamas, hang at car washes, hang at parking lots, hang at malls, hang at restaurants. More often than not, I meet interesting people with with ideas that are mind-boggling. So my Nipikas, is, is, it has got nothing to do with like uh, celebrities or, well, if there is a celebrity that I feel like is mind-boggling for me, who fits into the, 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 the thing, the format of the Nipikas, well, yes, we can put them on. What the fuck not? I mean, what the fuck? Why not? I mean, really, we can do that. But, but the bottom line is not that. I'm not for that. I'm just for the guy whom I bump into. And I can resonate with this guy at a level where I feel like the knowledge that he possesses deserves to be put out there to the public. Like, for example, you'll sit at a pub uh, or wherever. Meet a guy who's got solutions that most people out there are looking for, but they don't know where to find them. And it's just a normal, ordinary guy, maybe well-learned or, 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 or not so well-learned, but who would probably kind of like give you an advice of something. But the bottom line is every single Nipikas I try to, uh, uh, should I say, uh, come out of it with uh, some sort of a benefit to anybody who's watching. May it be at a social level or may it be in any other manner that would add value to any other person out there. Because remember now, people are, 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 are now, especially this time of, of, of the, of not of the year, this time of our life in this century where we just went through a pandemic. There's a whole lot of things that most people are, are, are just not clued up about. And this is a whole lot of things that people have never been clued about over the past couple of years. I mean, in, in, and besides that, there's also humor in it, you know. Humor like when you wake up in the morning on social media, you bump into... Things like things are trending, a whole lot of serious things going on, and other things are just the opposite direction. <laughs> so we talk about anything, anything that works, you know. <laughs> Remind talking about social media. Reminds me this morning when I when I woke up, I saw a female Spider Man. Oh, well, can I can I call them female Spider Man? Uh, Spider Woman? No, it doesn't sound it doesn't sound cheesy enough, right? Can't sell. I think Spider Babes or Spider Bay. Yeah, Spider Bay, I think it's on the mind. But now I was thinking, wow, let me let me tweet, tweet this thing or post this thing. Let me share it with the people. Let's see how they react to this. You had a nice body. Then I remembered, I, one time I read on, on, on Chappie's, Chappie's Bubblegum uh, rapper, I said the back, the part where it says, did you know? Did you? <laughs> I remember they said, they once said, female spiders usually kill and eat their male partners after pumping i'm like oh okay well she's hot for herself me I, and easy i'm not gonna go that far okay look so on the introspection what we did is um we did one with dudu that was nippy cast one dudu is a guy very interesting guy i later discovered that he's from or he's originally from zimbabwe but he went all over the world working uh, at, at mines, all over, all over, everywhere. What was mind-boggling about him when I spoke to him at first before we started recording, because we usually have to get permission from these people. These are not people that I call and say I'm coming, no. These are people that I bump into, and we just talk, and then I'm like, oh, wow, this is the content I'm looking for, you see? So, do do what he did is, um, he went all over the world, he worked, and now he is kind of like regretting why he did most of things, how he lived his life, and, and then he says the world is now fucked up, he regrets, even blames God for everything. He doesn't understand why God put him on earth. <laughs> so, but he's, he's a very smart guy, uh, full of jokes, humorous, whatever, you know. And I mean, we'll just chill there and talk, 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 talk. So he's that type of a guy. I mean, well, let's go through most of the moments with him, and then we'll go to the next one after him. 
or radiation. Mm. Well, where, well, which country is this now? Namibia, same place. How, how would you get radiation from uranium? Like when you when when you blow it up with uh, if you're using like a, it's still, it's, a nuclear technology? No, it's radioactive. It's, or, or uranium it's, is as radioactive. It's radioactive material. Really? Shit, you have been exposed to a lot of shit. Fuck. That's why I'm saying that I've suffered so much in this world. Uh, That's why you want to go to Mars. <laughs> oh fuck! Sorry, I'm, man. I'm so I'm so I'm so disappointed with this place. No, but in South Africa you're okay, man. You could have been worse. You could have been stuck in Cambodia, yeah. chief. I don't know. But we're not doing bad in this country, like I've been Did telling you. Did you choose where to be born or something? I didn't apply. I didn't even know if I was going to be born. <laughs> Did you choose? Did you choose? I didn't. And you know, it's, it wasn't going to be a fair game if everybody was allowed to choose. Do you know why? People will choose the best and there will be nothing else left. <laughs> so I think God did it purposely. So you just have to be on a, on a, what you call, on an even base. Start. Either if you're lucky, you're born in a rich family or in a poor family, you'll start from some shit. <laughs> Going whichever direction. <laughs> No, honestly, were you gonna to apply to be born where you, you where you were born if you had a choice prior birth? No, who said I must be here? Oh, so you who you say you're not <laughs> supposed to be born? Ah, oh, this guy. <laughs> yeah, vision clear. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> so you were saying you're gonna sue your parents. Yeah, because they didn't get your consent to be born. I like, they should have asked you if you want to be born. And so God. <laughs> oh my God! You want to sue God? <laughs> no, hey, my man, Jesus, my man. Whatever Jesus is, there. if the, the Christians are watching this thing, they're gonna be angry at you, Chief. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, okay. Okay, so you want to sue God and then what are you going to sue for? How much? Uh, millions, millions, millions. Millions? Fuck, fuck. If it's God, I will go for billions. <laughs> or trillions. Uh, or quadrillion. Uh, I don't care who this God is and where he is. Uh, ah, but my man. Okay. In which quadrant does he prevail? So, so you feel like it was not fair. It's not fair. You were not given a choice. Okay, so you were you gonna you were gonna reject your birth. I was going to reject. Saying? I was going to reject it and say no. <laughs> I am not going to. Con- <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to live like this. So you're gonna tell God that you don't wanna be born. I don't want to be born. <laughs> And can you give the offer to the next guy? Uh, <coughs> so uh, who do you want the next guy to be if you don't want to be part of this I would shit? Ra- I would rather be your, 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 your cherubim mm. or your seraphim. What's that? Is he a he or a she? I'm thinking maybe we can make him a unisex. Ah, oh, well, let's see. Hey, what up, guys? I don't know. I wouldn't know. I wouldn't know. Hey, who is he? And where is his son? You are his son. I'm looking for his son, Jesus. Oh, that one, he disappeared. He left. Jesus. Yeah, he left 2021 years ago. <laughs> Jesus. He left. I mean, that guy who haven't yes, seen. And he says he's going to come back. And the people are waiting. Yes. <laughs> and some people have been drinking petrol here. And then they've been eating grass and waiting. <laughs> and he's never sent an email to say, hey, my man, hey, guys, uh, wait, wait for me, wait for me. He's never communicated. I mean, 2,000 years ago, we understand there was no email. Today, you can send some shit but why and is tell he, us some shit. Why is he lying to me? He didn't lie. What do you mean? He never lied to anyone. Why? So what did he say? What? Yeah, he didn't tell us when. <laughs> He said, he said 
he's gonna come back. Yeah. You just have to wait. <laughs> he says he's gonna come and he's gonna blow your horn. And he's gonna go, he's gonna go Pooh. wakey wakey. Everybody was dead will wake up. <laughs> death in death or in life? I don't know. Whoever's gonna be alive at that time. <laughs> so he's gonna say, Pooh. wakey wakey. And then you're gonna you're gonna wake up as like ghost from Avalon, like Ooh. Like, like a, you know, you know, the silo, the silo, the silo. It sounds like a, it sounds like a very chill to me. Very chill. <laughs> okay, should we end this? Uh, <laughs> you see, uh, these are the people I meet. I don't know who sends them. <laughs> Well, that was Nippycast1, or should I say hashtag Nippycast1. Don't forget, my name is DJ Nippro. We're doing Nippycast introspection. I think we're going to do them every month end. You see, so now crossing over to Nippycast2, we had a guy called Elijah. Elijah, you see, that's the thing I like about Nippycast. He doesn't discriminate. You could be talking the biggest shit ever, or you could be talking the best <laughs> uh, sophisticated knowledge ever. We, we we will cater for you. We just want to see how far we can go with humanity in terms of hogwash and reality. You know, Elijah, the one part that made me record him is because he told me that he works at uh, the small down the road. He was this... Uh, <laughs> Uh, festival mall. He says he runs a stall. You see uh, the, the, the the cell phone stalls uh, at, at outside the mall, like on the right at the at the corridor, like by the passages there. You see them nowadays. They're all over the the show, especially in GP. So the one thing that mind boggled me about Elijah is that besides the money, I know the money didn't make sense at all. The one thing that mind boggled me about is why do they only allow the Indians, or should I say the Pakistanis, I don't know if Elijah is Pakistan or Indian, but it's, it's, it's an Asian uh, from Deben though. Uh, I don't understand why most malls allow those guys to go in there and open their own cell phone spaza shops. You know, for me, I've been monitoring this thing. I've seen it all over the show here in Johannesburg, most especially your biggest malls. Uh, I mean, they are there, these Indians, they are there, they are selling these things. They will come and sell you uh, a screen protector there. My friend, I can give it a discount. You, you know them. I, oh, don't, you don't want, don't buy. Them, you know. So they are there. But uh, one thing that uh, made me talk to him is because I know for sure if it was black people who are selling tomatoes and avos who wanted to open a, a, a spaza inside like a mall of Africa. There's no fucking way they're going to allow them to go in. So I just wanted to understand how, what's going on and how much money are you making? Because it sounds like a, it sounds like an organization. There's a lot of them. I, I don't know. I don't know. But there's a structure that we're missing there. So that's why I was interviewing, uh, interviewing him, even though some of the money figures or the calculations on tally. Well, <laughs> let's check him out. <laughs> oh, understand so there's, there's multiple this like a yeah. chain of of because they're mushrooming from all, all over all everywhere over. in, 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 in so, the province so uh, my boss so how do you guys get into the malls because we couldn't sell tomatoes inside the mall that's a fact did you guys so my boss manipulate is, this system so my boss is a south african so because so because he's a south african he can get more positions so basically one shop makes maybe no wonder, no wonder why you guys i never thought that i will see you guys at, yeah. at big malls so my shop. boss makes yes. over six thousand oh no now, now it makes sense yeah. no sit down sit down we're, we're still talking my boss makes over six thousand rand a month. Oh, okay, so then if wait, wait, let's start. Let's start. Let's start. Let's start. There was too much information. Too much information. Yeah, but I'm saying, I've always asked myself whenever I go to these malls, uh, especially Greenstone and uh, what's the other mall besides Mall Festival? of Africa. Mall of Africa, yes, and and and, and uh, even this one here by by the south here by what's this? The East Gate. Yeah, Alberton and then man. Yeah, East. Yeah. yeah. Actually, the entire uh, whole thing. So my boss, he owns in, over in the, uh, 35 shops. So in in these malls, they never allowed us to go in and sell tomatoes. Né? But you guys came and started selling things inside. So if you this come guy's to built us, shops inside malls. So if you uh, come to us and you sell us, you've got a business, <laughs> and you're selling tomatoes, 
No problem. They we will can... never allow us, man. They only allow you guys to go in. I don't know how do you pay. How much rent do you pay? We can <laughs> allow you guys <laughs> if you're selling on your own. No, you... I've never seen. Have you, Chief, have you ever seen uh, black people selling uh, uh, like uh, street vendoring stuff inside malls, permanent malls? Never. So when but you our... guys, you guys, you you, you 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 took products that you used to sell at the taxi rank and went into the mall, into built the mall. stalls, yes. and then yes. and, and now you're yes. making a million bucks per fucking week. So Fuck. just remember. <laughs> With the outsource companies, uh, the Nigerians and whatever, they uh, make money as well. They pay our bosses, our bosses pay us. So if you, for example, you make uh, 6,500 per month, you basically, you're taking home 3.5. Okay, well, you know, I get it. I get so it. I've, because I've our them. boss is a designated dealer. Even this screen, this screen protector, I bought it from, um, uh, let me think, let me think. I think at Greenstone. Even me as well. Yeah, but you guys don't sell college. What is this? What is this? Check, check here. What's this? So because no, I'm like this one. I think I got it at Mall of Africa. So because you're doing screen protector, mm. we can give you a discount. But if it's yeah, no, I want my money back. It's broken. <laughs> we can charge you two point five to three point five. No, I would pay that shit <laughs> for a screen. No, 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 for the protector, check, it's, it's gone, yeah, on, on the edges. For the protector, because it's broken, we can offer you 2.5. Not the, no, but, uh, not the screen, my screen is not broken, the protector. The protector, yeah. because the protector is broken, 2,500. Dude, the protector costed me 100 bucks. This guy. This year <laughs> is original screen protectors from Huawei. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> everything we do, guys, everything we do, guys, is straight. <laughs> you want to rob me? We don't go through Samsung, we don't go through you Huawei. You want to rob me? No, no, no. <laughs> we go through the Huawei head office straight. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, we yeah. contact the head office, <laughs> the head office give us the prices, and then we tell the customers the <laughs> Are you saying you're the official? Huawei and ambassador. <laughs> Because of the Huawei ambassador, we make extra profit. Oh, you're making me sweat, my man. We make extra profit because of the Huawei. Uh, okay, okay, okay. Let's let's not talk about cell phones anymore. <laughs> you're talking to yourself. Myself. Oh, you've got an alter ego. As long as you have a lot of money, you can get a girl. No wonder why you're drinking a lot. I'm drinking a lot and I'm drinking a lot. So you're stressed? I'm stressed. Your chick left you. The bitch is stuck my dick in there, by the way. <laughs> okay, I'm ending this job. <laughs> yeah. Yes, that, that's, you see, I told you, he's a special kind of guy. Uh, well, I don't know who sends them, but I just bump into them. Remember, most of these people, I don't even know them at, at a personal level. Well, uh, cool. Like, for example, the next guy, he's a Nigerian guy. Bumped into him at some pub downtown. I was just chilling, minding my own business, and I see this guy walks in. I'm like, uh, this guy looks interesting. Then, obviously, we kick off a conversation, just like any bar talk tap or chat, you know. Ah, then uh, one thing led to the other, and I asked him for permission. Uh, obviously, you can't just start recording, eh, 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 or else you'll get it. <laughs> yeah. So, and then what I did is uh, I, I, I was more interested on... Nigeria and South Africa and the stereotypes because uh, there's a stereotype of, 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 of Nigerian we all know uh, the one on top of the list is the drugs the second one is probably um, human trafficking and all, all most all the corruption well not even the second one the second one is actually scams scams internet scams you have won the lottery but you've never bet it it's you know those things <laughs> those those and then and then I was interested in talking about that and also um, residency uh, of, of of the Nigerians in South Africa and whatnot and dating whereby you, you usually more often than not get a Nigerian guy dating a South African chick but you'll never really get a South African guy and getting dating a Nigerian chick do you get what I'm saying that type of thing that's why I was having uh, this conversation with, with uh, sh 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 uh, what's his name again Shegu remember I, like I don't know this guy I just met him and we resonated in terms of conversation wise so and then and then we started and we kicked off you know yeah well and then oh we also spoke about hustling because he seemed to be like a hustler and I like type, those type of guys so when they come into the country they don't play they are here to make money but the question is is it legit or not well check out Shegu uh, that is Nippycast volume 3 or should I say hashtag nippycast3 check him out cool guy <laughs> Yeah, like you see one thing I learned about life, man. Uh, like you for 
when I came to South Africa, I used to see uh, in Bonobo in Southend, in Ekehe. Oh, Benabo is yeah. from which? Bonobo is in Nigeria. Oh, yes, yes, the popular one. Yeah, you know, Ian Ekehe was a fight. Oh, yes, no, no, no. After that speach, during the xenophobia, when Ekehe went to say something against Nigeria, he didn't say that word. And Bonobo tried to call him, like, man, you didn't supposed to say this kind of word. You know, Oh, yes, I remember it was a Twitter fight. So, he didn't. Reply what was the story? story? What was going on there? Yeah, during that time, the Nigerian xenophobia. So, mm. South Africa was saying Nigeria must leave, foreigner must leave. And, you know, and then what did Benaboy say? So, in tweet, they were like, yeah. but the AKA came to the tweet that truly, must be Nigeria. What was AKA's angle? Like, AKA I remember was like, there was a scuffle. Yeah, yeah. AKA was it. saying, like, Nigeria, they are selling drugs. Yeah, okay, well, it's, not, it's not really lying, but I mean, it's not no, all of them. I'm coming. You see that what he said? I'm not saying it's lying. Yeah, but it's not all of them. But so you can't everybody everybody with can, the same and, and see this is what we're saying now. Mm. There are a lot of South African etc. I know a lot of South African etc. But who's but, but supplying them? <laughs> okay, that is what you must ask yourself. Okay, who is supplying them? And ask yourself, how does this thing okay, come from the airport? Okay, maybe there's some things we should not say. <laughs> No, that is, you see, there was, there was a day I, 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 I listened to the Elfin. So you see, there was a time I, I was an Elfin freak before. I, I keep listening uh, what's that? because of those. Which, which station? I was why, uh, uh, Metro Elfin. Metro Metro. Yeah, that's I keep the listening biggest, to those, those that's the reality, biggest in the country. I mean, shows. commercial you know, the station the country. Show. There was hmm. a night, I won't forget that night, it was around 12. I, I couldn't sleep, so they were talking about xenophobia and hmm. foreigner. And Everybody will call it. There was a South African guy that called. He said, uh, there's a neighbor of mine that stayed in my home place. Uh, what, a neighbor? Brought, yeah, he's oh. a Nigerian guy. Yeah. He said, they brought him from the village to South Africa. Mm. He came there, he was sleeping in a coach, in the, in, the, in the lodge. He was like squatting. Squatting. Mm. He said, after eight months later, that decent boy bought two cars and able to rent a two-bed. So where does the money come from? So where does the money come from? Mm. And then what was the answer? So... Listen, Peter, it, it was asked because the community were like, hey, what, do you, what do you think he was doing to get him money? He said, I don't know. I saw him going out in the morning, coming back around 8. So, but he was hustling. So we don't even know if he was legal or illegal. Listen, he said, I suspect he's doing drugs. He said, they said, I ask him, have you called the police? But they wouldn't do the same thing for a white guy who's at the neighbor. The, uh, that, I'm coming. That's what I'm just trying oh, okay. to say. Oh, yeah. So, Sorry to did you call the police? He said, yes, did, we did call the police once. And when the police went there, they saw he was selling all the food. They were selling those kind of expensive food. So they asked him, how could you make... What kind of phones? Like like, uh, like iPhone, all those kind of accessories, accessory, computer, all those things. They were like, how do you make that kind of huge amount of money? Do you know what the boy said? He said, truly, when he came to South Africa, he came to hustle. He came from a poor family. So when he came, he started working with his brother. Like, he was serving his elder brother. Mm. Out of his phone, how to do this thing. What? Did he make that money from the so, phone? For, listen, real? for real? No, no, that's what I want to give you the no. speak. I doesn't make the money. Yeah. So, there was a, after he landed for six months, yeah. he thought, like, I need to start my own. Oh, then he grew. You understand? So, he had to call but money it, from it, home. Would it, would it, would listen, it take a year? He, he had to call money from home. More money? For home. Like a father had to, to sell, his to start his own business. Ah. Yeah. Oh, see, so he was was okay from home. No, it wasn't okay. So but the father, the, the father had to sell his property, Are like you, the oh, land. Oh gosh, you know, I see, I see. So the father so sold the land and compromised so this, for the son this guy. Ah. to start life. Fair way. So when the father sold those land, when they sent mm. the money, yeah, it nice. was up to like two hundred and fifty thousand rand. No, so it was able for him to start up a business. And how did this start? He bought an accident car that was damaged. And it fits. A car he bought of 40,000, he sold it close to 80,000 rates. Also, he kept trading with cars. You see? <laughs> yeah, I no, got okay, okay, let's go. Let's cross over to um, uh, the part of um, uh, Nigerian women and South African women. Yeah, you see, one thing that, like, like what I used I to say. I don't understand. Okay, look, look, look. Maybe, and this is not even a xenophobic shit, it's the truth. I don't understand why you guys. Pump our women, and then you don't let us pump your women. Okay, that's where I want to go. Yeah, no, just, no, yeah. no, what is this? It's not fair. It's not fair <laughs> because there's no Nigerian women doesn't come here a lot. <laughs> the people, the one that come here a lot, like those women that come there, are not too beautiful. 
maybe the one you can see locally that are beautiful, they are better and rich in Nigeria. So you say yes, some hot Naomi Campbell of Nigerian to school, to school, you understand? Uh, That's the only way you can meet it. Then you see about pumping the South African system. South African women are beautiful. No, but another problem is because most of the people, uh, most of the Nigerians would use them to generate citizenship. No. You see that thing you said, uh, I, I don't know about anybody, but I know about myself. And which is stupid. It's a law. It's a stupid law. Because uh, that law, if I was the president of Home Affairs, I mean, um, if I was the president of the country and I would appoint a minister in Home Affairs, that would technically make... Uh, uh, that the, the, uh, whoever gets married to whoever becomes the nationality of where they come from. So meaning that if you you, you meet my sister, yeah, and then you, and then you want to marry her, yeah. she becomes a Nigerian. No, automatically. <laughs> and that, that will be me. No, no. But, well, nobody will like but, that. But, but, no, they like it. It's already it's already. In the the heaven. Yeah. If I marry a South African wife, fine. They give me a permit. Already, automatically, she's a Nigerian. Oh, you mean in your country? Yeah. But the thing is, not nobody's there. Everybody's here. You know. Yeah, there, there you had it. And, and I think I'm going to go uh, look for him and we'll finish it off because we never really reached the climax that I was looking for content-wise uh, with Shegu. I hope he's watching or wherever he is, uh, you can get in touch. I'm sure if you're, if, if you're watching this thing, you, you, you can easily find me. I'm the most reachable guy ever. The ever by far. You, you can just keep hanging at that bar. I'm sure one day we'll bump each other again. <laughs> Doesn't have to be an official meeting. Okay, uh, the fourth guy uh, is, uh, the, is Mr. Chavala Lamshengu. I just recently discovered that his other name is Daniel. <laughs> okay, well, in his case, uh, I knew him for a year. We frequent this other pub. Uh, the one thing that I liked about him from day one, ever since I met him, is he's authentic in terms of, of, of guidance. He's an emadala, he's got wisdom. And I like hanging with those type of guys because we're young and we want to learn things new things that can better for our lives and then and then we, we we leave it according to the way we we think is best based on history and what we think the future is holding for us so mr mshengu chavala let's go those type of uh, vibes you know that's what i benefit from when i'm sitting with him even though most more often than not we we just we just we probably just talk shit 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 the whole time but sometimes we get serious because in this case we kind of like got serious politically where we spoke about political agendas, issued, issues, current affairs. We also even went back down memory lane in terms of um, apartheid, because he, he was also from the era of, was this, uh, um, exile. He's a type of guy who was hanging with the people who were in exile. They were freedom fighters. Remember them contours at the time? Yeah, you know, it's those guys. Uh, well, he will tell you all the history of, 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 of the old white government that used to terrorize us and killed his friends and everybody. He made it out alive and he's very, he's, he's very, he's very, very open-minded. He's a cool guy. We laugh a lot, but uh, m most of the time we focus on empowering each other in terms of what we can do better going forward. Obviously, based on, on, on what the elders have, have, have experienced before. So, from him, what we are generating is more like using history to fix our current problems so that the future can be smooth. Well, nothing will be smooth in life, but I'm sure you know what I mean. So, check out Mr. Mshengu Chawalala. This was volume four, hashtag NepiCast4. All right. I with a friend of mine, a Jamaican friend of mine, because they're big on Jamaicans. They were in London, I used to play. So I thought, guy, you guys would make one. Yes. <laughs> so what, what, what made you think it was drums? This Drums, because I saw it from an angle. Because I've been standing in the sun you all day. You saw this from an angle? Yeah, I've been standing in the sun all day, so I see pretty damn clearly, but also because of the sunshine in my eyes. If I look at a certain angle on things, it takes about an hour now for my eyes to settle down. I can't uh, even use the computer. To understand. I can't even use the computer properly. Uh, okay. I'll sit down for about an hour and hang down on the computer. Oh, okay, sure. It was <laughs> what the fuck has he saying? <laughs> he thought you were playing drums. Oh, not drums. Drums. Oh, it's a, uh, it's um, it's that game that looks like chess. Yes. Ah, okay. Yeah, but this is not close to a square. This thing. <laughs> if he tells you that his eyesight is fucked up. <laughs>
He oh, saw us sitting him. and looking down and he thought we were shifting. Oh, we are shift, yeah, we're, yeah. We're doing moves. Exactly. Oh, but he looks like a special kind of guy. He's from uh, the UK, famed in the UK and came to South Africa. That's my narrative. I still believe in freedom of speech. <laughs> I was asking why he Sun pollution. Mm. Fucking bikers. I don't know how many decibels are there. That's like decibels of steroids. No, remember, I was asking him why he didn't die from COVID. He's uh, like, ah, it's not the dying type. He's like, ah, yeah. He's a sweet 16, forever strong. Mm. Uh, no, but it, uh, maybe it's just, it was it, just lucky. Lucky. Mm. Oh, next one. You see now, it was loud, but loud. I, th I think the motorbike kind of like killed our eardrums. <laughs> So that guy's on that motorbike the whole day like that, hearing that that noise. He enjoys it. Without earplugs. And he's deaf. Oh, oh this is that guy. <laughs> that will make you deaf. How do you know he's deaf? <laughs> yes. There is something mm. that you guys are missing. Mm. At this age and time, mm. you've got children. Mm. Ah, what one. do you expect? I don't know about you from. I've got, you mean? Uh, he says we've got children. I said, yeah, I've got four. He's got four. Yeah. And then uh, maybe you also tell us how many have. <laughs> I've got seven. <laughs> the ones that he knows. Only seven. <laughs> he, and now. He's got 17 children all over the world. All over the world. The ones, he that, tells he, me. The ones that he knows. The ones that he knows. You know. <laughs> they, <laughs> Why? Is that funny? <laughs> yeah, that's like weird. <laughs> you think it's normal? What the fuck? <laughs> My father told me to diversify and be fruitful. And what then is then. your problem? <laughs> 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 oh. Next time when your son marries, the Makoto will come. With the let's say your surname name is uh, <laughs> Mr. Mr. Um, and then the, and uh, then the Makoti, the, it's not the same name. Uh, the name is Mutaum. Uh, and like, oh, your name is Mutaum, but uh, our surname name is Mutaum. Something doesn't make sense. Here. Like, I mean, all over the world. Does so, it have it, to make no, sense? No, ask him about the family reunion. How can okay. it take sure like a soccer match? So dangerous and <laughs> make it so artificial. <laughs> no, but I'm sure. Uh, uh, your family reunion. The other day you said you left here and you said like your your kids are. I mean, your grandchildren at home, whatever. I was I was about to ask. Uh, is it the one team or is it the, the other, other team? They play the whole team. Yes, I have no one team the other team. The substitutes it's my well. team. <laughs> the whole thing is like teams. It's like, oh, one million, one million people here. How do you manage this half thing? Chinese, half ballad, but, half but, but you see, There you go. Say, I respect, I respect one yeah. thing mm. about that generation. Mm. No matter how many kids they had, they were mm. always there for the kids. Right. Maybe let's equally, ask him, were you always equally, there for all of equally, them? Equally for all of them. course. All 17 kids all over the world. How do you manage this thing? And how much money do you need to it do to sustain this shit? shit? How can you take something so natural and make it so artificial? Uh, yeah, there. This Madala is funny. F is funny. F what a crazy guy. <laughs> Okay, and then on Nipicast 5, uh, it was a guy called Barry. Barry is a model as well, he's from Deben. He's from the era of uh, IT, but not, it wasn't IT then. At that time, they used to call it um, computers. This is the time when Bill Gates was starting out. This is the time when, uh, what's that one of April? What's his name again? Uh, Steve Jobs was, was also starting out. It's from that era, like when the computer was creeping into our lives, but we didn't even know what's going on. We didn't even know what the internet is. This was like mid eighties. So, so it's from that era. And then he started, I think at a factory in Deben or whatever, whatever, whatever. So he grew up with this business and then he, he managed to venture out and did his own computer businesses. 
and the information technology business as, as the mid 90s went through but what interested me on on Barry is that he used to make money like water remember the year y2k or the year 2000 when people were confused they didn't know what was going to happen beyond 1999 <laughs> yeah that time oh <laughs> Barry used to go out there and fix uh, whatever the computers need apparently they had to change some number from zero 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 oh yeah well uh, you, you can check out uh, the highlight of that uh, dialogue and in his case we also spoke about how he made his money and how he lost it and then how he lost his family and uh, and, and, and and how he's planning to to recover and then and then the, the the guidance that he can give the guidance that he can give anybody who's currently making the money that i'm talking about millions then you know in 1999 which is 20 years ago which is almost equivalent to like what almost hundreds of millions today you know so well that that's the reason why i was interested in talking to him uh well in this case um it could be longer it could have been longer it's just that um we cut out some few things because it was not comfortable with some content so you see part of nipi cast is discretion we don't want to get you in trouble because you came here and then we met you at the bar and then you're drunk and you just spoke shit and then you get you in trouble. No, no, no. <laughs> so check out Barry uh, and uh, all the pick, uh, the pick of it. Um, well, there's one thing I fucked up here with this mini because the volume, the volume of this thing was not on the money. So uh, I'm gonna have to invest on audio quality, eh? And maybe technician, yeah. But there's no money. COVID has just fucked me up. You know, I'm a DJ. I've not been gigging for a while. So I went there. I'm not going to get this man. You see? Yeah, I mean, the, okay, but if you've got a sponsor, you can sponsor the big and then we can do a proper shit. And then instead of just hanging around, you're looking like we're in Taliban. You're planning to give a, a, a bomb threat warning to America. <laughs> Check out Mary. <laughs> That was uh, Nipicast Volume uh, 5, um, hashtag Nipicast 5. <laughs> so what happened when they enrolled in India? Yeah. So the mind is related that um, the year was in, in 2000. Yeah. In yeah. 1999, the last year. Yeah, that's number one. Uh, what? I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. 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 Okay, uh, when they program the date sequence, the chips in it, like what is what the icing, the ICs, and the, the components that make up the Okay, the stuff that is between the keypad and the bottom. And underneath, yeah. Okay, sure. Okay, so what happened there was when they program a sequence for a date, they program it as two digits, two digits, two digits. Date, I mean, day, month, and year. So the year, the year was the year. Was, when the year reaches 19, I mean 1999, basically it'll be 1999. Nine, yeah, be like 99. Uh, it's gonna go to zero zero after that. Which will make it the year 1900. 1900. Fuck. So if, if I had money in the bank, it will say in 1900 I was not born. Yeah. So I don't exist. I don't have money in the bank. My million um, bucks will disappear. So, no. But also, <laughs> but also, oh, well, but also, if you hold the bank, then we'll get there. They will probably end up owing you. Oh yes, it will be like Backwards. like before. Backwards. Well, it's like the reverse. Yeah. And you don't want that to happen because that will be technically the end of the world. Yeah. That means we fucked up the whole shit. Yeah. Now, it, it was gonna be. Uh, Another, this was another version of war, first tech war, but equivalent to another world war. World war, I don't know what, 4 3. Because we're going to fight over money at that time. Yeah, it was going to be a major, 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 major thing. So, what happened was uh, people were thinking that the planes are going to fall off the sky. But it was like a confused. The plane yeah. was not flying in 1900, but now it needs to fly past 12 o'clock in 1999, 12, 59 seconds. Not zero. <laughs> Yeah. Where, where are you going? Because this was, state doesn't exist. <laughs> I was in a dealership because I still a lot of work for the major, yeah. I don't know, yeah, the major car dealership in, in KZN. Uh -huh. Okay, and uh, I was sitting there and this one sales lady came and asked me, there's a woman on the phone. Uh -huh. She wants to know if I'm a white you pay for Panda. I'm not a <laughs> 
ten. <laughs> hey, I'm serious. No, but every time you would have expressed why you did it. We recently during the election, so the people are talking about poor and canned foods and stuff oh, like that. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> they were pulling up the crowd is putting gasoline and everything. Did they fight for toilet paper? 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 Did they fight for toilet paper?
my phone was with me. Mm. No one can touch my phone. In fact, no one touched my phone. Nobody even touched my phone besides you. Oh, I hope, I hope you don't want to tell me what I'm suspecting. It's exactly what you're suspecting. Oh, I right. You have reached the voice of the family. Please leave a message. Ah, 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 come on, baby, come on. I told my wife, no, where's my phone yet? This shit up. Yeah, I swear. On my daughter and my son. No, that was... I swear to God. Yes. I can hear it's my phone yet. Dial this number now. And now I'm going to see what's right on the answer to my phone. Dial this number. And first thing I have to ask you, what the hell did the mother phone me for? Mm. Why couldn't you phone me if you needed something? Mm. Yeah. So she died. Mm. And I left my phone really, really. Mm. I can write now, listen to what's right on the answer to my phone. Mm. I will reach the voice of the song. And she looks at me. Uh, yes, so that's very, uh, uh, well, other, other than that, uh, I mean, the, the, basically that's the summary. Introspection of Nippy Cast. This will happen every single five episodes. So the next one will be Nippy Cast uh, 6, volume 6, hashtag Nippy Cast 6. It is not predictable. Remember, my thing is very spontaneous. I don't go there and call somebody. Well, I hope it reaches that point at some stage, but I'm the guy who's very social. I go around meeting people, whether I made a gig or whatever. I know, I know when I'm talking to you that, hey, there's content here. So uh, it, it's not one structured thing. It's uh, all over the show type of thing. You know, we, we don't ever say a saying of, uh, no, do I a little bit? No, 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 anybody. Because, you know, one guy that I can bump into now can change somebody's life out there by giving an advice that nobody was ever expecting to hear from that particular guy. And you will never you will never meet that guy in your life, but you can meet him through these type of platforms. Thank you for watching the introspection. My name is DJ Nipro. Let's meet at the next edition of Nippycast, which will be Nippycast 6. We don't know who's going to be there. All right. Thank you.